Welcome to Bible Logos, the broadcast featuring the teachings of Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire, pastor of Faith Fellowship Community Church of North Highlands, California. Hi, I'm Deborah Phipps, your broadcast host. Welcome. In today's message called, Can You Handle the Truth? Dr. Barney launches an attack against traditional religious teachings of the so-called sovereignty of God. People often blame God for where we fall short in life, arguing that God is sovereign. However, Jesus taught us that our lot in life has more to do with the decisions we make with our seed than the sovereignty of God. Now let's get into the word. Prosecutors Club. <laughs> and in the movie, there was a young man who had been victimized by some unethical hazing. And they were sent to investigate, they were assigned to investigate that crime and to bring to justice whoever would have been responsible. So if you followed the movie, you know there was a, the person Jack Nicholson's character, Colonel Jessup. Yes. If you followed the movie, you learned that he was ultimately responsible. Yes. And one of the biggest scenes from the movie occurred in Tom Cruise's examination of him. Yes. Subject, I want to ask the question, can you handle the truth? Look at somebody and ask them. Can you handle the truth? Now put your hands together and give God praise. Oftentimes when we have grown up in church, as many of us have, there are so many things that we have been indoctrinated to. And there's a lot of church doctrine that we learn and it becomes a part of our culture. Yesterday, as an illustration, we had a meeting with uh, the ushers and other uh, um, uh, ministries that are a part of what we're calling the First Impressions Ministry. And it was brought to our attention and my attention for the first time, I never knew this before, uh, that someone had done some research and that uh, what they found was that you know the stance that ushers do in primarily in African American churches where they put their hands Amen. behind their back? The origin of that was slavery. And the reason for it, they were required to wear gloves on their hands and to keep one hand postured behind their back. And the reasons for that was the reason for the gloves was so that they would, when they had to touch people, they would not contaminate them. And the reasons that a hand was put behind the back was so that you would only have one hand that they can keep a lookout for in case you were there to steal something. And this is something that has been indoctrinated in the black church and it's become a part of our history and a part of our culture to the point now where we see people and ushers who don't have their hand behind their back and we look at them, what's wrong with you? Because you don't have your hand behind your back. How many of you know that it's not significant to have your hand behind your back as an usher as it is to greet people with love and bring them into the house of the Lord and make them feel comfortable? I don't care if you don't put your hand behind your back, but what I do care is if somebody gets offended because you didn't smile at them. Amen? But we've been indoctrinated with things such as that. And so when we come into the knowledge of the truth, Sometimes it's kind of hard for us to accept. The question that we're asking in today's message is, can you handle the truth? Week to week, we've been talking about the power of seed. And I've given you some, what I called musing, some thoughts that came to me as I was studying about seed. And one was that all life emanates from seed. Remember I've been talking about that? Number one, all life emanates from seed, whether it's plant life, whether it's animal life, whether it's human life, it all comes from a seed. Number two, seed takes on limitless forms. 
limitless identities. You can have physical seed of all types of sizes, all types of shapes. You ever had some seed that was hard? It was very difficult on its uh, core, the, the outside of it. And then there are other seeds that that's, you can break it, you know, you can snip it in half just like that, right? There are seeds that are large. Some seeds are really small. And, it, you know, what's also interesting is that just because it's a large seed does not mean it produces a large fruit. And just because it's a small seed doesn't mean it produces a small fruit. Seed can come in a variety of shapes and forms. We've also talked about the fact that all seed is not physical. Your dreams are seed. Your dreams, your visions, the things, your goals, these are seed for your future. Seed takes on all types of forms. It takes on all types of identities. We've also talked about the fact that anything that is done with expectation of something in return is seed. Huh? If you obey the word of God because God said he would obey you or, or, or because God told you to obey the word of God, then God says that he will bless you as a result of your obedience. So then your obedience is seed to the blessing. Do you see that? If you are willing and obedient, the scripture says in Isaiah, you will eat the good of the land. Two conditions, willing and obedient. So then if I am willing, that's a seed. If I'm obedient, that's a seed. And the fruit is what God said, which is the blessing, which is the good of the land. Number four, the blessing of life, the blessing of Adam, the blessing of all mankind is tied to the production of seed. God told him when he put him there, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And notice God tied that to blessing. The scripture says he blessed them and said. So then what he said to them was the blessing. What was the blessing? To be fruitful and to multiply. And then number five, we've talked about the fact that where there is seed, there is power to produce life. Anywhere there is seed, that is power to produce something. So if something is not around, if there's a void in any area, what that tells me is to look for the seed that produces that thing. If I'm lacking fruit, I like peaches, I like grapes, I like watermelon, I like oranges, whatever it is that we like, the way to get those things is to find the seed to those things. You say, well, I can go to rallies. Well, rallies got it from somebody who started with a seed. So it traces back to a seed. And what we've mentioned from week to week that is if we understand all of these concepts and if we understand all of these principles, if, if this stuff makes sense to us, then what we should understand from it is that there is nothing more important to life. There's nothing more important to life and there is nothing more important to quality of life and there is nothing more important to the future of life than seed. Also, if we understand these concepts and these principles, it also makes sense and we'll understand also that some of the biggest decisions, some of the most important decisions that you can make in your life involve what you do with your seed. Some of the most important decisions that you can possibly make in life involve what you do with your seed, because whatever you do, whatever you did with your seed 20 years ago, you have some effect from it today. Whatever you do with your seed today, the future is going to hold some promise in it or some result from it. Whatever you neglect to do with your seed is going to tie you up and hinder you in the future. We've also talked about the fact that in order to survive, in order to flourish, in order to, to do well, you've got to know what to do with your seed. You've got to know what to do with your seed. And so 
because of the significance of seed and because the enemy is privy to this, he knows that if he wants to take you out, if he wants to destroy your future, one of the most uh, effective ways that he can do that is to come after your seed. Because when you find a, a species of animals that are extinct, for example, the way that they became extinct was that the production rate was less than the death rate. There were more dying than there were more being born. And as a result of that, they became extinct. So Satan knows if I want to take her out in a certain area, go after the seed. And that brings us to Mark chapter 4, which gives us the parable of the sower. And last week we looked at the different things that Jesus described in Mark chapter 4 that can be the result of what you do with your seed. He said one, one category, he called them wayside. And he said, wayside are those who hear the word, but Satan comes immediately in order to steal the word that was sown in their heart. The word comes and you reject it like you're playing baseball. You bat it back because you don't believe it. You don't receive it. I don't believe that counts. I don't believe that happens today. I don't believe that's applicable. In the church, sometimes we use this term called the sovereignty of God. And we say because we, because we believe that God is sovereign, we believe he can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, how he wants to do. Right? And yet the Bible, so see, that's what we say. But the Bible says that Jesus was in a certain town where he could not do any mighty miracles there because of their unbelief. Your unbelief can stop the power of a sovereign God. Then we talked about stony ground. Stony ground are those who hear the word. They immediately receive it with gladness. However, the scripture says they don't have any root in themselves. And so they endure for a time, but when tribulation, and that scripture, notice that scripture, it doesn't say if tribulation comes, it doesn't say if persecution comes, it says when, look at somebody and you say, it's coming, it's coming, tribulation is coming, even, you know, some folk make you feel like if you get saved, you don't going to ever have no trouble again. Huh? I'm wrapped up in the master's arm. And as a result of that, I'm not going to ever experience any hardship. I'm not going to ever experience any trouble. I'm not going to, nothing's ever going to go wrong. And then three weeks later, you find out the truth. The scripture teaches us that when tribulation and persecution comes, if you're, stone, if you're stony ground, you don't have any root in yourself, and so you get mad, you get offended, and you walk away. The Bible says that's stony ground. Look at somebody say, that ain't me. Look at somebody say, that ain't me. The next category that Jesus taught identified with thorns, he said those who are sown among thorns. And he describes those as the ones who hear the word. Notice they hear the word. It says in, the, in that case, however, the cares of the world. Lord, you're just so much hardship in the world today. Lord, we don't know what's going to happen when we wake up tomorrow. Lord, you see all this unrest that's going on. The devil is just taking over the world. And you're so focused and you're so consumed and you're so concentrated on those things that you disregard the power of God. 
and you disregard the word of God and you disregard the power of your prayer. Because if, the, if my people would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. God is able to heal the land. But we forget about that scripture because we're focusing on the cares of the world. But notice, not just that, he also says the deceitfulness of riches. Everybody say riches are de can be deceitful. Riches can be deceitful. Now, remember, we talked about one scripture a few weeks ago that says that money answers all things. But then we need to follow that up with another scripture that says the love of money is the root of all evil. Money of itself is not the problem. But if I'm consumed with it and it consumes me and all I think about is how to get it and I can't go to church because I got to get me some money. So I'm working three jobs trying to get paid. Or I'm working all kind of strange hours where, you know, I can't go to church because I need to rest today. Because I work six days a week. Because I got to get myself some security. You better put your security in him. Because if your security is in it, it fades away. It is like a vapor. It gets stolen. Moth eats it. Other stuff corrupts it. The stock market fails. And cause folk who were trusting in money to lose their mind. But he says those things choke the word. And then he said other things, just other stuff. That's just, you know, I'm just so burdened. Well, why you burdened? I don't even know. But, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just so burdened. All this stuff is going on. And the Bible says these things cause you to minimize the power of the word. And even though the word is powerful, and even though the word is uncorruptible, the Bible says it becomes unfruitful. Look at somebody and ask them, can you handle the truth? So back over in Mark chapter 4, he says, if anyone, verse 23, has ears to hear, let them hear. Then he said to them, take heed what you hear. Woo. Remember now, when Jesus started this thing out and then he gave them the parable and there were some who sat behind and they lingered and they said, we got to get this because you said this was important. You said, no, you're not this parable. Then how shall you not know all the parable? What, explain to us what you're saying to us. Right. Remember that some stayed behind. They wanted to get this. And he said, the sower sows the word. Then he gave them this explanation. And now he said, after he gave them the explanation, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Let them hear what? Let them hear what I just said. Huh? You, he said, you need to hear what I just said. You need to hear these concepts and these principles that I'm teaching you about the power of a seed. You need to hear and understand what wayside is so that when the devil comes after you, he can't cause you to stumble. You need to hear and understand and be aware of what it means for seed to be stoned on stony ground so that when tribulation and trials come, you expected them and you're prepared for them. You need to hear and understand what it means for seed to be sown among thorns so that when the cares of the world come and somebody calls you up and lays their burden on you and girl, this is going on and girl that is going on and girl I don't know what I'm going to do and girl I don't know what I'm going to make it instead of you get drugged down you stand up and start speaking the word of God Jesus said if any man has ears to hear let him hear and then verse 24 he says take heed what you hear Take heed what you hear. What that mean? 
when I study the Bible, I try to figure out what does that mean? Take heed what you hear. He said, take, he telling me all this stuff about hearing. And then he tells me, take heed what I hear. We don't talk that way today. Take heed. You ever heard somebody come up to you and say, take heed what you hear? That don't happen today, does it? Millennials. That don't happen, right? Take heed what you hear. He's saying, scoot up real close. He said, Look, you better give me your undivided attention. He said, you better filter the stuff that you let get, to, get into your ear gate. He said, don't let everybody put all their poison on you. Don't, let pe don't, don't be people's garbage can, people's dump truck. Take heed what you hear. You can't listen to everything because it's designed to paralyze and choke and smother the word. If the word contains the power to make itself come to pass because Jesus said it is the seed, huh? And because God put within every seed the power to make itself come to pass, if the word is a seed which contains within itself the power to make itself come to pass, then anything else is coming in there, is, if it's sent by the devil, it's sent there to choke and smother the word that's in you. By the time some of y'all get to bed at night, your head is hurting so bad and spinning so bad from all the garbage that people have dumped on you. Jesus said you got to learn how to filter what you hear. And some people want to give you the whole account. You ever find yourself sitting there 45 minutes later, they still talking because they want to give you all the detail. I'm learning how to say, just, just give me the first line and let's pray. <laughs> what we trying to accomplish, what we trying to get to, and let's pray. I can't be Dr. Phil for you. I can't be Oprah for you. I can't be, you know, we don't have no couch in here for you to lay down on. I'm not here to give you therapy. I'm here to pray. I'm here to get you delivered. I'm here to get you set free. And, and me hearing your story and everything that you went to is not going to get you set free. It's going to make you feel better until you see the next person that you can dump on. What's going to get you set free is us getting into the word and teaching you how to stand on the word of God. Look at somebody and say, can you handle the truth? So he says to them, take heed what you hear with the same measure you meet, it shall be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given to you who hear more will be given. If I know that you are a healer, a hearer, I can trust you with more. Some of us can't get very much from the Lord because he can't trust us with anything because you won't hear. I know this is good teaching up in here today. Yeah. To you who hear, more will be given. Yeah. Who's talking here? Jesus is talking. Do we know what he's talking about? Huh? Y'all don't sound confident in him. Does Jesus know what he's talking about? Yeah. Jesus said to those who hear, more will be given. That's why the devil wants to distract you and keep you from hearing. So that you can turn around with your religious self and say, well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Take a scripture and quote it out of context. Or so you can say, well, it's the sovereign will of God. It's the sovereign will of God for me to be in this state. It's not the sovereign will of God. Get in his word and stop. Your church you grew up in told you it's the sovereign will of God. But God said in his word, Jesus said, with what measure you meet, 
it shall be mentioned unto you. Now, I have two choices. I can go with you and your doctrine, or I can go with the word. Guess where I'm going? We're going to do part two next week. Stand to your feet. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. We're going to get set free up in here. We're going to get delivered up in here. We're going to get the victory up in here. We're not going to be defeated. We're not going to walk around with our heads down. Talking about all this burden we care. We're going to walk in the victory of God. We're going to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Up in here. Look at somebody else. Can you handle the truth? Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And it don't, some people say set you free. It don't say set you free. Let me just, as I know, I'm starting part two now, huh? Let me deal with the difference between something that's setting you free and something that's making you free. If something sets you free, then you can be recaptured. Jesus didn't say set you free. He said make you free. Because if he makes you free, you free indeed. In today's message, we learned that the Lord has shifted the responsibility for where we land in life onto us. You cannot blame God. You cannot play the victim. It's all about the decisions you make with your seed. If these messages are a blessing to you, please write us and support us at Bible Logos, the broadcast. Care of Faith Fellowship Community Church, 5937 Watt Avenue, North Highlands, California, 95660. Please enclose a generous donation to help us broadcast these messages on the air. For more of the ministry of Dr. Melvin G. Barney Esquire, you can join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. sharp for the ultimate worship experience. That's the Faith Fellowship Community Church located at 5937 Watt Avenue, the city of North Highlands, California. You can also find us online. Our web address is faithfellowshiplive.org. You can connect with us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash faithfellowshiplive. Or you can download our mobile app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just enter Faith Fellowship Community Church in the search bar. I'm Deborah Phipps, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with whatever measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.